hour as we approach the first presidential election since the January 6th insurrection, we are seeing shadows of a resurgence of a far-right political movement of the past. Our next guest has a look at how the John Birch Society's teachings are being mirrored in the Trump MAGA movement. And joining us now, George Washington University professor Matthew Dalek. He's the author of the new book entitled Birchers, How the John Birch Society Radicalized the American Right. And Joe, I can't imagine better timing for this book. <laughs> well, you know, it's fascinating. There's an ebb and flow. Uh, when Ronald Reagan first started campaigning in 1966, a lot of John Bircher supported him, and he was told pretty early on that uh, he had to distance himself, and he he came out with a pithy statement. I, I, I know Matthew will know it far better than me, but something along the lines of, you know, if they support me, they're going to have to support my views, not, not vice versa. Uh, and Matthew, I'll tell you, when I was running in 1994, there were still John Birchers around. They, they weren't, uh, they, they, they were sort of kept at arm's length the same way Reagan kept them at arm's length, but they were still there in Republican politics. I think the biggest difference now is the door has been opened unto them, and they're having a much bigger impact than they have in quite some time. You, you know, the thing I'm, I'm so struck by is the first 40, 50 minutes of your show, much of uh, what we heard from Ron DeSantis, uh, Donald Trump, other leaders of the Republican Party, strikes a birch key. Uh, the conspiracism, this idea of, of a George Soros plot, right, a, a, a Jewish uh, international figure, uh, the uh, the kind of uh, nativism and isolationism that we've seen come atop the GOP. A lot of these ideas are the descendants of the John Birch Society. And you're right, Joe. Right. They still the, the Birchers still exist as an organization, um, although there there are not many left. It's not like the 1960s when they were uh, right. really the the epitome of far right extremism. Now it's mad. Well, and you know, the, the, the interesting thing too is, and, and I really should have focused more on this as we went through the past five or six years, but now that you're talking about it, they would have these grand sweeping conspiracy theories, mm -hmm. and it would be international Jewish bankers, just like Ron DeSantis is talking about now. But they would, you know, surrounding it all was this fear that the communists were coming to get us, right? Yeah. But the deeper you dug into it when you would push back, just like on any of these Trump conspiracy theories, you go, yeah, but wait a second, though. We yeah. were pushing back on communism, and we actually won the Cold War, because this was happening in 94 with me. We actually won the Cold War. And then they would say, well, yes, but the United States is part of the conspiracy, along with the communists, the deep state. They're working with the I go, well, wait a second now. So we fought a war against communism for a, a generation. We beat them. They're in total collapse, but somehow we're conspiring with the communists who we've been against. You get the idea, because you <laughs> yeah. know all of this. Yeah. But none of it made any sense. And I was like, okay. Yeah. And then I would say, okay, let me talk about banning <laughs> offshore oil drilling, everybody. And I'd go to another group of people. But it didn't make any sense. Yeah. Well, well, it doesn't. They're very hard to follow. Look. The most infamous conspiracy from the Birchers was Robert Welch's, the leader's idea that Dwight Eisenhower, uh, the president and, of course, the, the leader of D-Day, a, a war hero, a general, was a dedicated agent of the communist conspiracy. Um, and that, of course, uh, offended not just liberals, but many Republicans at the time. I mean, they, you know, how do you get from Eisenhower to communism? And the thing about these conspiracy theories uh, is that they're very adaptable, right? They're pliable. And so when the Cold War ended, what you see are people like Pat Robertson, for example, or Ron Paul, adapting versions of these Birchite conspiracy theories and weaving them to different ends. So Ron Paul, for example, spun this theory uh, about a North American union, that George Bush was basically conspiring with Mexico and Canada to create a NAFTA superhighway and create a, a North American union like the European Union. And George W. Bush, actually, to his credit, rejected that and said, you know, I've been in politics a long time. I've seen this rodeo show before. You throw out a conspiracy <laughs> theory. They want you to they want you to refute it. But I'm not playing that game. 
Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, it's impossible to refute. It's, you know, the, the theories are so Byzantine, uh, and they take a shard uh, of truth or, or evidence, and they spin it into something unrecognizable. Matthew, is this a strand of thought in American political life that's just always there, that has always been there, and that gets tapped into by the Birchers or by the yeah. Tea Party or by MAGA or whatever from time to time? It has, yes, it's been there from the inception of the Republic. I mean, of course, we were founded in opposition to the central state. And so, you know, this idea that the, the federal government was going to take away our liberties is really deeply ingrained inside the United States. And so, you know, Joe, you referenced Trump's rhetoric about a deep state earlier. Well, that's similar not just to the John Birch Society, but to Joe McCarthy talking about the, the traitors inside the State Department. Or, you know, you can go back to the founding of the Republic or the 19th century, where they found conspiracy theories based in Washington or about international bankers. Um, and, and yes, there is, a, I think, within the country, and a lot of people have written about this, there is a kind of deep-rooted sense of uh, especially centralized powers, whether that's, you know, mass media or Washington, D.C., that is depriving people of, of wealth and their liberties. And look, Trump, in his final campaign ad in 2016, um, spun one of these. I mean, you can go back and watch the ad, and he talks about how globalists, and he flashes on screen, I think, three Jewish uh, uh, bankers, and says that the globalists are trying to, to take away uh, your wealth. They've been stealing your wealth and, and rigging the system on your behalf. And so uh, it's a very good question, and you're right. I mean, it's, it's, it's really deeply American. Uh, and in, in some ways, though, the difference now is that it's just become more and more mainstream for a variety of reasons, some of which I get into the book. All right. The new book is Birchers, How the John Birch Society Radicalized the American Right. Matthew Dalek, thank you very much for coming on this morning.